What's going on guys, this is ETA Prime back here again. Today I finally got my hands on the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus and we're gonna take a look at this thing. Straight out of the box, first thing you're gonna notice is this thing is pretty small. We're not quite in the Raspberry Pi Zero territory, but it's getting really close. I haven't had a lot of time to spend with the A Plus, but I did get RetroPie up and running thanks to my buddy Crash. If you're interested in getting it up and running on the A Plus, I will leave directions in the description plus a link to his Facebook page where he tells you exactly what to do. I'm sure the RetroPie team will update their build eventually. I mean, it could be in the next few hours or the next few days, but if you're in a hurry, you can get RetroPie running on this thing right now. I do plan on doing some benchmarking and thermal test with the A+, but this video is just kind of an overview, and I do want to show you how RetroPie performs on this thing. So if you're interested in seeing more on this, keep an eye on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I want to go over the specs and features of the A+, but you got to remember that this is a $25 single board computer. It was not meant to be an upgrade from the Raspberry Pi 3B+, just kind of a slimmed down version. You might have already noticed that it only has one USB 2.0 port, but they did leave us with the 3.5mm audio jack, plus it does composite video out. One full size HDMI port, and this will do 1080p 60Hz. Micro USB for power in. 5 volts, 2.5 amps, just like the Raspberry Pi 3 or 3B+. We still have the DSi Display Port and the CSi Camera Port. They kept the same Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth module as the Raspberry Pi 3B+, so we have 2.4, 5GHz, 802.11b GNAC Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth Low Energy 4.2. Standard Pi Pinout 40-pin GPIO header. The CPU is the same exact one that came in the Raspberry Pi 3B+. We have the Broadcom BCM2837B0. It's a Cortex A53 quad-core 64-bit CPU at 1.4 GHz. CPU performance is going to be exactly the same as the B3+. On the other side, we have a micro SD card slot, and we also have the RAM module. Now, a lot of people were disappointed in this, but this was not an upgrade over the Raspberry Pi 3B+. This was just kind of a slim down. So in the 3A+, we only have 512 megabytes of LPDDR2 SD RAM. Did I mention this thing was pretty small? At the very top, we have the 0W. Right in the middle is the board we're looking at right now, the Raspberry Pi 3A+. And all the way down at the bottom is the B+. The a is going to be great for slim projects that just need a little more power than the Zero can put out, but I would have loved to see this CPU crammed onto a Zero frame. It would have been really nice. Who knows? Maybe next year we can see something like that. You never know with the Pi Foundation. So like I mentioned at the beginning, I haven't had much time with the a but I was able to get RetroPie up and running, and I want to show you some performance here. It should be able to emulate anything that the 3B Plus can. Now, we're going to be limited by RAM, so choosing the theme for your RetroPie setup is going to be very important with the A+. Plus. Some use more RAM than others. I don't think you'll have a great experience running a track mode on the A+, Plus, but if anybody wants to give it a try, let me know how it works in the comments below. Now it's time to test out RetroPie. If you're in a hurry and you want to get this up and running on your A+, I do have instructions in the description. I'm also going to leave a link to a Facebook post by Crash, and he explains it a little more in detail. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are working. I do have my Bluetooth controller paired up with the A+, and it works fine. I loaded up a couple ROMs from several different systems. I do want to test out PlayStation and N64 in this video. If there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments, and I'll make another video. Themes seem to be working pretty well. This is the stock carbon theme, but I'm going to go into my UI settings and switch over to locomotion. You can get this one on the ES themes menu along with all the others you're going to see here. Everything seems to run pretty smoothly here. Every once in a while, I'll notice a hiccup that I don't notice on the 3B+. But again, we're working with half the RAM on the A+. I don't have any cooling on this board and I have not overclocked it. I will be making an overclock tutorial. I want to see how high I can get this thing. So this is one of my favorite themes. This is SCV720, also available on the ES themes menu. Super clean and it runs really good. As you can see, video snaps are also working and they're actually loading up a lot quicker than I thought they would.
The first system I want to test is PlayStation 1. If we can run PlayStation 1, then we're not going to have any trouble with NES, SNES. All those lower-end systems are going to work fine. And my game of choice will be Bloody Roar 2. I also went into Retro Arch and enabled the FPS counter. It'll be in the lower left-hand corner. So far, so good. Now, when we started up the game, it was at 57. That's pretty normal for the Raspberry Pi. But we quickly jumped up to 60 FPS. Game feels smooth and looks great. The A-plus handles PlayStation pretty well. I'm sure you're going to be able to play most of the library as long as it's compatible with the emulator we're using. I know it's not a hard console to emulate, but I do want to go into Genesis slash Mega Drive and test out Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And for the final test system, we're going to go with some N64. I'm using Mario Kart. Now, this is a pretty optimized game for this emulator here, and it works well on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Pretty sure it's going to handle it fine, but this doesn't mean that the A+, is more powerful than the B+, and you're going to be able to run every N64 game at full speed. Just means that some of the games that work well on the Pi 3 are also going to work well on the A+. Really nice performance here. I can't wait to get some overclocking going and some cooling on this chip here. It's obviously a lot more powerful than the Raspberry Pi Zero, and it's a bit bigger. But I think that the guys who make those Raspberry Pi boys are going to go crazy over this thing. So yeah, the A Plus handles Retro Pi pretty good. You're going to be able to play anything that you could have played on the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus on the A Plus. And this thing retails for 25 bucks. If you're buying it on Amazon, it's anywhere from 28 to 32. But if you have a local micro center near you, go ahead and pick one up there. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. This was just a first look at the Raspberry Pi 3A+. Really like this little thing. If you already own a B+, and you're happy with it, and you don't need something slimmer for a project, there's really no need to buy something like this. But if you're like me and you gotta have every Raspberry Pi, it might be worth it. I think it's an awesome addition to the Pi family. I already have a few more videos in the works. I'm gonna do some benchmarking and Raspbian. I'm gonna go ahead and overclock this thing. I might even delit it, throw some liquid metal on it. 
Who knows what we're going to do with this thing. But if you're interested, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you turn notifications on so you know when I upload my next video. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I'm going to leave links to Amazon in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.